Well, we've made it to October, so welcome to eclipse season. I know, I should have just done jazz hands to like emphasize that. I could have done that a little more dramatically. I do have a Gemini moon, but I decided to tamp it down a little bit. Because the eclipse seasons are going to be interesting. A little intense, they always are, but this is very interesting. So it's not as, the placements aren't as bad as last year, as uh, last October and November, but definitely some interesting stuff. So I'm not going through all the transits, but I'm going to try to hit the highlights here. October. We kick off October with, on the 4th, having Mercury go into Libra. Libra is not a bad place for Mercury. Mercury is pretty happy in Libra. Not as happy as he was in Virgo because Mercury rules Virgo. So he's very, very happy there. Mercury in Libra, it's okay. It's pretty chill. You know, needing some balance. Love that. Um, on the 8th, we have Venus moving into Virgo. Now, this is a fall position for Venus. Venus does not like being in Virgo. Venus does not enjoy persnickety, analytical Virgo. I can't imagine why. Um, but this is not the happiest place for, for Venus. It is better than having Venus retrograde. I think we can all agree to that. But it is the fall position for Venus. On the 10th, we have Pluto going direct at 9, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is great. Pluto kicked off uh, retrograde season, and now he's going direct, and the rest of the planets are going to follow. Yay! So glad for this. All right, on the 12th, we have Mars moving into Scorpio. This also is a good thing. Mars has been in Libra, and Mars in Libra is very passive aggressive. So Mars moving into Scorpio is strengthening. It's a really good place for Mars. We're happy. Moving, moving on ahead. Um, on the 14th, we have our new moon in Libra and our solar eclipse. So not only do we have the moon and the sun conjunct with this new moon in Libra, um, we also have Mercury conjunct this nice little solar eclipse. So we're, you know, we're going to be working with a lot of communication here, especially those of you that have a lot of Libra placements. So make sure that you are on your path. Make sure you are, you know, working your plan. I like to say that lately. I don't know why. Do you know why, Mouse? On the 22nd, Mercury moves again. Mercury moves into Scorpio. Again, Mercury is pretty, pretty chill in Scorpio. Everything seems good. This is where we sort of dive deep into our secrets. Maybe we're not communicating as much. Maybe we're holding some stuff back. It's not bad. It's not a bad thing. On the 23rd, we have the sun moving into Scorpio. Excellent Scorpio season. Gotta love that. On the 28th, we have a full moon in Taurus. The sun's in Scorpio. We have a full moon in Taurus, and we have a lunar eclipse. Yes. So we have the lunar eclipse, um, and this is going to affect, again, Scorpio placements. The reason why it's affecting Scorpio placements so much is because that Jupiter retrograde is definitely affecting people that have Scorpio placements feeling like maybe they don't have enough in certain areas of their life. Look and see what, where Scorpio is in your chart, what house it's ruling. Take a look and see. <clears throat> then, to, to cap it all off, and it's one of our favorites here, right? Halloween on the 31st and the start of Samhain. It takes us into November, into November 1st. So really an excellent time excellent time. So we end the month, we end October with four planets in earth, five planets in water, the north node in Aries, one tiny little placement of fire with north node in Aries, and nothing in air. So this is challenging. And again, I'm not talking about asteroids. I didn't even mention asteroids. 
but this is this is huge so we have a lot going on with keeping grounded and our emotions keep that in mind as we go through the month and let's see what we have for your individual numerology are you ready for that mouse Hello, Life Path 9. <sighs> October. Even Mouse is excited about it. Not really. Really. This is lining you up for what next year is going to be like. Mm -hmm. This is an eight month for you. October is eight all the way. And next year in 2024, it's an eight year. So, <sighs> eight eight months for you is going to be about abundance it's going to be about understanding that there's an infinite supply that it never ends i like to say that an eight is when you turn it over on its side it's the infinity symbol it just keeps on going ups and downs riding the wave yeah it's good um this is definitely a time to get your banking together to get your banking uh in order it's a time of uh, karma and reaping what you sow. It's a time of ambition and power, but it's also a time of inspiration. And this is a great time for you to set an example of empowerment for others, of self-empowerment for others. Sorry, my cat is like moving my stuff. Um, <laughs> this is a great time for you to set an example of self-empowerment for others. This is definitely uh, your the energy that you're working in is seeing the best in others looking at them and seeing the, the best that they have to offer because this is a time of service it is it's a time don't move my camera i love him but this is a time of service to uh, you know our fellow humans even to the animal kingdom so keep that in mind the lesson of the eight is to lead with compassion for others and not with the ego because the shadow side of an eight is feeling responsible for other people's choices um, it's definitely like feeling that all of that extra responsibility that you could be adding on to yourself um, trying to fix others mm, we've all been there haven't we life path nine leading with the ego and attachment to the material so there are some things that we are you know going through this month or that you are going through this month that definitely has a lot to do with the seeds that you've sown in the past um and i have written down for you to watch venus watch the aspects of venus especially around this eclipse energy the eclipse energy is going to feel like a natural thing for you because you're used to transitions. You're used to completions and endings so that you can have a new beginning. During this time of abundance, watch what's going on with Venus aspecting this eclipse energy. Because it is going to be a little, it's going to feel like it's uh, um, familiar energy to you, but it's also going to feel a little bit like unsteady. And you're going to be like, I'm not really sure. This is a little bit unusual. It is unusual because this eclipse energy can bring about chaos. I'm not saying you're used to chaos, but you're definitely used to transitions. You're used to completions and releasing. And this is a wonderful time of rebirth. It truly is. And that's something that you're, again, part of your life path. Um, more part of your life path is completions of cycles, which again, that eclipse energy brings in. Um, this is definitely, I already said, about accepting endings uh, to bring about new beginnings. It's that big circle of life. And I'm not going to start singing because I don't want you to tune out. Um, this is, uh, you are in a place of choices. And the great thing about the you is that you take the next steps with courage to move towards a goal. 
And I love that. I love that. So be your usual generous self here, Life Path 9, while you're in this month of an 8. Mm -hmm. The shadow side of a 9, um, for some of you that may be new here, is fear of change and fighting change. Uh, can also be moody or impulsive and a little careless with money. So because this is a time of banking and this is a time of abundance and money, make sure you're paying attention to where your money is going and don't let it slip through your fingers this month. The lessons of the nine is to recognize patterns and let go of them when they're no longer serving the well-being of us or the unit that we're in or the entity. Make sure you let go of them when they're no longer serving you. That can be really challenging. It really can. But the eclipse energy is going to be a big deal for you this month. I don't think it's bad, though. I really don't. I am pulling from two decks of cards this month. The Goddess Guidance Oracle deck, if I can get it to focus. And the Healing Oracle Crystal Reading Cards. I'm only reading from the two decks because I felt like the Eclipse energy was enough. And I didn't need to add in a third deck. So... If you uh, disagree with that, I'm sorry. I'll bring in another deck next month just to, you know, play it up a little bit. <laughs> um, but let's see what the cards have for you today. <laughs> Ooh, Nematona, sacred space. Wow, I love that. Nematona. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but as I say in almost every reading. I'm Southern and I butcher names. Spirit Quartz, music, oh my gosh, that's very pretty. I don't know that I've ever pulled that card. Okay, Nematona, sacred space. Create an altar or visit a power place to connect with the divine. Wow. That definitely makes sense because you being in an eight month here, nine, this is um, learning how to, or setting an example of self empowerment for others and visiting a powerful place to connect with the divine or creating your own altar. That could really be important. Mm, mm, mm. Love that. Okay, spirit quartz. Here we go. And it may also like help ground you and listen to the inspiration that's coming into you this month. Because an eight month is about us inspiration and an abundance of it. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Spirit Quartz. Spirit Quartz is a magical crystal full of wonder and joy and assists you in connecting to the music of the spheres. 
It holds within it the healing medicine of music, sound, and vibration. Music, was, music is one of the most powerful healing modalities in the universe. It resonates deeply into your psyche, inviting you to open and experience the magic and bliss of the cosmos. Spirit Quartz consists of many small crystal points singing their song of love, encouraging you to connect to the healing essence of music. It opens you to your natural gifts, talents, and passions related to music and sound. It opens you to the music of the cosmos. It connects you to the fairy realm and nature spirits to a sense of magic. It balances the chakras and energy field, creating well-being. It invokes inspiration and balance. It aligns to the pure joy and freedom that is your divine birthright. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Can't find the button. That's awesome. This is a great month to set up an altar. This is a great month for you to get a preview of what next year is going to be like. Because next year is an eight year. Well, listen to some music. Bring in that sound vibration. There's a lot of those on YouTube. So, check them out. Thank you so much for joining me today, Life Path 9. Uh, thank you so much for making the numerology shows the most watched shows on this channel. I am still celebrating the uh, one year anniversary of this channel through the first week of October. So make sure you check out my website at metaphysicalroundtable.com. I have um, reading specials and I am doing a giveaway. So check out my website to see how to get enrolled into the giveaway. I know, I'm giving away some great stuff. So, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful October. And until we see each other again, Life Path 9, get out there and make your magic. Bye. Mm -hmm.